So, quarter graphs are shaped like this. If they're positive and this if they're negative, they can also look like a plain old parabola. Okay, the same thing applies. Now, three eyes talking about quartic methods. Okay, quartic graphs, intercept method, sorry. All right, so the way this works is very similar to cubics. Okay, so if we have y equals x plus a, x plus b, x minus c, x minus d, okay, our intercepts are at negative a, negative b, positive c, and positive d. Okay, so that graph, if I move it up a bit, would look like so negative a, negative b, c, and d. It's a positive because all my x's are positive, so it's a positive, so it's going to come down through a, through b, back down through c, and back up through d. So it'll look something like that. All right, now if you have a factor squared like it was in the cubic ones, if it's squared it means it touches at that point. So if we have y equals x plus a squared, x plus b, x minus c, okay, that graph, so I should put an arrow to that one, that graph will look like, I'll do it underneath it, so it will touch at negative a, it will cross at negative b, and it will cross again at negative c. Oh, sorry, at positive C, and it's got the same basic graph. It's still a positive, so it should be the same basic graph. So it's going to come down, touch at A, go down through C, and then back up. All right, so it's got three intercept points there. Touching at A because it's a squared factor, through B, and up through C. Okay? Now there's one more type of quartic graph that you need to worry about, and that's if we have a cubed factor. So x plus a cubed, x plus b. All right. If it's a cubic factor, it looks like a standard cubic graph at that point. So it's called a point of inflection, which means it does sort of... Let's draw this one and we'll, we'll talk about it. So it's going to touch at negative a and at negative b. So it's going to do a point of inflection at A, which means that, and then back up through B. So a point of inflection is one of these guys here, okay, which is what your standard cubic graphs look like. Here is your point of inflection, although dodgily drawn, it's a point where the gradient is zero. Okay, so it sort of goes through, stops, and then goes down again, basically. All right, so that's your quartic graphs, the best way I can explain it. When you are graphing them, you do need to find the y-intercept as well. To do that, for that particular example there, you would just do a times b times negative c times negative d, and that will give you that, that y-intercept there. All right? So they might ask you to do long division to do this, or use your calculator to help you do it, all right? But the same process for long division or, or using your case calculator for all of it, it's this stuff that doesn't change as well, all right? This is the same as we did in the cubics. Make sense? So let's have a look at question three because it's a bit of a backwards one. Okay, so this is in 3i. We've got the question y equals x plus a, x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 3. And it's quite easy if you think about this quite logically. And it says four distinct x-intercepts, which means that a is not 3 or 1 or negative 3. Okay, because it's four distinct intercepts. And if we go back and have a look at what we just talked about, if we've got four distinct intercepts, one, two, three, four, then we have four distinct brackets. Okay, if we only have three intercepts, one, two, three, then we have three distinct brackets with one of them being squared. If we have two distinct intercepts, one, two, we have two distinct brackets with one of them being cubed. Okay, it could also, actually one I didn't talk about was what if we had two lots squared. So let's quickly talk about that before we go back to that question. So if we have x plus a squared, x plus b squared, that graph is going to touch at negative a and touch at negative b. So it will do that. Okay, like a w touching at those points. So keep that in mind 
two, all right? So you can have two distinct intercepts if both factors are squared. So the number of distinct brackets you have tells you the number of distinct intercepts you have. Does that make sense? All right, so this one says it has four distinct intercepts, which means that A is not three, one, or negative three. So it's not gonna repeat any of them, okay? It also says it has an intercept at 45. Okay, so given what I just talked about, about finding the y-intercept back here, okay, what did I have to do to find the intercept here? I did A times B times negative C times negative D, okay? So to work out what the y-intercept, so we know 45 has to equal A times 3 times 1 times negative 3, okay? So 45 has to equal negative 9 times A. So A is actually negative 5. Okay, so it's not as hard as it looks to do that. You don't actually have to graph, you don't have to do anything, you just need to use a little bit of logic, okay? But the trick in that question is, I think, the four distinct intercepts, the rest is just basic algebra.